Hello students, welcome to another session. Today we are going to analyze the JEE Main Test 55 released by NTA on the Abhyas app. I have solved it right now. And as for me, one question can be regarded as tough, 5 were easy, but 19 were medium. Medium questions involved calculation and good concepts. So it's not an easy, plus it's not a very tough paper. You can say it's a perfect JEE Main paper that we usually expect. So again, the score should be in line with that. So I can say for an average student, if he scores 60 plus, he is doing good. And for a good student, you have to get 80, 85 plus because you can score it because all the questions are familiar to you. There's hardly any concept which you don't study in your coaching modules. So you, you can even aim for higher marks. Let's start. Let's see what is in the so Let's paper. begin solving the paper. Let's see, start with the first question. The dependence of speed of water surface waves that is the capillary waves on the density of water wavelength and surface tension is so one way is you can just make out from the dimensions because i can see all dimensions are different so you have to do by dimension analysis you don't know the formula as such so either you can check individual or you can go for a general way so i go for the general way better would be to check each and every option so i'm going for the general way let's see what it is so let v uh, be proportional to some rho to the power a lambda to the power b gamma to the power c so what we have dimension of vk is some constant as it dimensionless so it would be rho a lambda b gamma c sort of thing so dimension of v you know is m0 l1 t minus 1 for density you know it is mass per unit volume that is ml minus 3 let's say to the power a lambda is length that is l to the power b gamma is surface tension surface tension is force per unit length that is ml t minus 2 by l that is equal to mt minus 2 to the power c so if i do the m power comes out as a plus c L power come out as minus 3a plus b, t power comes out as t power comes out as minus 2c, okay. So just comparing the two sides, a plus c is 0 and let's say t1 I should compare first, minus 1 is equal to minus 2c which implies c is equals to half, putting it here we get a is equal to minus half. Now for the second one this minus 3a plus b is equal to 1, so a is minus half plus b is equal to 1 so b comes out as minus 1 by 2 again so b and a are negative so they would be root uh, a, a inverse so that would be uh, what we have a and b so rho and lambda will be in, uh, in the root uh, down uh, in the reciprocal uh, so in the denominator I, I should say and gamma is in the numerator so go for option b next so this is based on your dimensional analysis next one in the ydse fifth dark fringe is formed opposite to the one of the slit so if i draw the diagram if you can recall so let's say this is the position of uh, fifth what we had dark bend so fifth dark bend it is forming here so for the fifth dark bend we know the part difference is 4.5 lambda so 4.5 lambda is equal so 4.5 lambda would be equal to the part difference which, which we typically denote like uh, this one this d sin theta uh, so this d sin theta will become 10 theta and that theta would be y y is d by 2 upon d that is what i can write so what i have the value of lambda comes out as d square upon 2 into 4.5 that is 9d so go for option d directly i can go for i'm assuming d is much much greater than small d otherwise you have to take that uh, formula hypotenuse and that won't give the exact result that you are getting here next one so this option is d now the next one i see third one what it says the apparent coefficient of volume expansion of a liquid filled in a and v vessel of identical volumes are found to be gamma 1 gamma 2 respectively if alpha 1 be the linear expansion of alpha then the coefficient of linear expansion of beta will be okay so what we know we know gamma parent is equal to gamma liquid minus 3 alpha of container that is the formula we know so what i have gamma uh, gamma 1 is equal to gamma real of liquid minus 3 alpha 1 and gamma 2 is equal to gamma of liquid minus 3 alpha 2 alpha 2 that is of b so now i have to find the value of alpha t so just uh, equating gamma l from both sides gamma 1 plus 3 alpha 1 would be equal to gamma 2 plus 3 alpha 2 so what i get alpha 2 as gamma 1 minus gamma 2 by 3 plus alpha 1 that is what i am getting so looking at these options carefully what i get now i will be getting the value as gamma 1 minus gamma 2 by 3 plus alpha 1 so it seems clear that the answer given is wrong it should be gamma 1 minus gamma 2 by 3 plus alpha 1 that i am sure i have checked it it should be it's uh, there's some mistake in the data given okay the answer is give, given in your app is b but i'll i'll still go for d because that is what i feel is correct okay next the gravitational potential of two homogeneous spherical shells having same surface mass density at the respective centers are this 
if the two shells coalesce into single one such that the surface area density remains the same mass density remains the same then the ratio of potential at an internal point of the new now shell now here i take the analogy from electrostatics that the potential at the surface and center is same and in electrostatics you write it as sigma r by epsilon not so basically if sigma is same we can say v is directly proportional to r so initially what we have v1 upon v2 that was equal to 3 is to 4 that is equal to i can directly say r1 by r2 first of all now when they combine combine means the area must be the same so 4 pi r1 square plus 4 pi r2 square that should be equal to 4 pi r square so referring this r1 as let's say x so r2 will become what i can say r1 will become 4 by 3x so now what i can have i can have this 4 pi x square plus 4 pi into 4 by 3x ka whole square equal to 4 pi r square the new radius uh, so what we have x square plus what we have 4 by 3 so it's basically 5 by 3x you can make it out so this is a, in now 5 times so the ratio of potential of an internal point of the new shell and a so new shell l 5 by 3 times a radius so that ratio will also be 5 is to 3 you can directly make it out this is option number c that i can write next a particle moves with constant acceleration along a straight line if v1 v2 v3 are the average velocity in the three successive intervals t1 t2 and t3 of time then the correct relation is this question was asked by someone uh, some of my student few days back so it's an interesting one if v1 v2 v3 are the average velocity in the three successive intervals t1 t2 t3 of time then the correct relation Draw its position on this timeline let's say this is the a to b this is let's say zero this is t1 and then i would have this duration as t2 method this instant would be t1 plus t2 at c and let's say this is d this interval is t3 equal uh, it's not looking equal on my diagram but you can make it out and let's say this is vd let the initial velocity be u so what is the average velocity in this because acceleration is constant what i can say v average would be va plus vb by 2 here so what i can have here v1 would be equal to u plus i can write it as u plus a t1 by 2 similarly v2 i can write it as in the starting interval it is u plus a t1 plus it will be u plus a t1 plus t2 it would be like this a t1 plus t2 divided by 2 similarly v3 would be u plus a t1 plus t2 plus u plus a is a t1 plus t2 plus t3 by 2 this is what i can make out from the basic uh, v equal to u plus a t equation so if i do this this becomes u plus a t1 by 2 similarly if i write this v2 by this again this will become u plus if i write it it becomes u plus a t1 plus a t2 by 2 similarly v3 becomes u plus a t1 plus t2 what i can say u plus a t1 plus t2 yeah a t1 plus a t2 i should write plus a t3 by 2 this is what i am getting now uh, going by this uh, relationship uh, now first of all let me do v v1 minus v2 and let it be divided by v2 minus v3 so if i do this v1 minus v2 what i will get uh, this subtracting this will i will get it as v1 minus v2 i'll get as uh, v1 minus v2 okay so v1 minus v2 would be some negative term so i should write it as v2 minus v1 and that will write it as v2 v2 v3 minus v2 so what i will get a t1 plus t2 by 2 that will i will get and similarly if i do v3 minus v2 on the similar profiles i'll get it as t2 plus t3 by 2 times a so this is i'm getting this is the plus sign i'm getting so i'll go for option d that is seems to be the most appropriate one now going ahead so it's a good question in one day it's a, it will take time small ring of mass m is constrained to slide along a horizontal wire fixed between two rigid supports ring is connected to a particle of same mass by an ideal string okay and the whole system is released from rest as shown in the figure if the friction coefficient between ring and wire is 3 by 5 the ring will start sliding when the connecting string will make an angle theta with the vertical then the value of the theta will be particle is free to move and ring can slide only it is being clearly mentioned so first of all let me have it like this uh, okay and let me change the pen this is being fixed let's assume this is ring and let's say it, it goes something like this so let's say it has gone by let's say now this angle becomes theta so the distance it crosses what i can say from energy conservation i can directly make out this height would be l cos theta so mg l cos theta is the loss that would be equal to half mv square because till now it has not moved so v is equal to root 2 g l cos theta so because v is equal to root 2 g l cos theta if i draw the tension and i draw the mg then the famous equation towards center you write t minus mg cos theta equals mv square by r so i get the value of tension i get the value of tension is what 
mg cos of theta plus mg square by r that is m 2gl cos theta and r is basically l here so that cancelled what i get 3mg cos theta so that's okay now this tension will now have a component here which i can write it as t uh, t sin theta long horizontal and that tries to move it so that should be limiting case equal to fs max fs max would be 3 by 5 into the normal and if i draw that in normal the normal value will also change here why it will change because along the vertical i will have t cos theta plus the ring's mass equal to normal so normal would be what i should write mg plus t cos theta and t cos theta is a 3 mg cos theta so this becomes 3 mg cos square theta that is that is what i should putting the values here t is 3 mg cos theta so what i get 3 mg cos theta sin theta and here taking mg common i get 3 mg by 5 here it is 1 plus uh, 3 mg cos square theta i get uh, not mg will be not there because it is taken out 1 plus 3 cos square theta so this 3 mg 3 mg thing goes uh, again now 1 plus 3 cos square theta i am getting and this is cos theta sin theta so i should write it as 5 cos theta sin theta is equal to 1 plus 3 cos square theta now putting uh, the values uh, it's better i can directly check it out what it should be because i know for 30 and 60 there will be some root 3 factor will be coming so it cannot be the complete integer so i can try for 45 so it is uh, 1 by root 2 into 1 by root 2 that is 5 by 2 that is 1 plus cos square theta is 1 by 2 Uh, the the dot that means 3 by 2 plus 1 that is 5 by 2 that is satisfying so 45 degree will be the option otherwise i would have gone for none of these so you can try this it's a good question next one suppose the earth was covered by an ocean of uniform depth h being very very less than r let sigma be the density of ocean and sigma be the mean density of earth let delta g be the approximate difference in value of net acceleration due to gravity between the bottom of the ocean and the top g top minus g bottom choose the correct option so let's consider let's say this is the earth and this is the layer of ocean that I, we are talking about now this is the topmost point this is the bottommost point now uh, doing this first of all g at bottom would be the normal g that we write as 4 by 3 pi rho gr r is the radius of the earth let me mark it here also this is r and this is h now for g at top what i will write g total mass enclosed which is rho into 4 by 3 pi r cube plus sigma into 4 by 3 pi r plus h whole cube minus r cube. I can write like this. Okay. Uh, let me uh, write it completely uh, clearly because you might get confused. Minus r cube. Like and this whole is divided by the distance that is going to be now r plus h ka whole square. So if I do this now, if I simplify it, what I will get? Uh, let me take uh, it uh, common. So what I will get? Uh, 4 by 3 pi g. I take it or take out as common. I take uh, this uh, r cube thing also as common. What I will have 1 plus 1 plus h by r whole cube minus 1 into sigma upon what I have r plus h whole square. So let it be r square 1 plus h by r whole square. Okay. So this will get cancelled. What I will have 4 by 3 pi, and this would be rho actually. pi rho gr sorry pi gr not rho rho will be inside uh, let me can calculate it gr this would be rho plus 1 plus a sigma into 1 plus h by r ka whole cube minus 1 now this whole one will be like this so 1 and 1 cancel this is h by r now what will get 1 plus x to the power 3 can be written as 1 plus 3x so 3h by r i can write and similarly i can write it as 1 plus 2h by r here so now what i'm left with uh, if i do this i need to subtract the two things so i will subtract it g top minus g bottom so 4 by 3 pi rho uh, pi g r common i will get it rho plus sigma 3h by r upon 1 plus 2h by r minus rho that is what i will get so if i do this uh, what i will get 4 by 3 pi g r if i do this Rho plus sigma 3h by r minus rho minus rho into 2h by r upon 1 plus 2h by r. So because it is very very small, I can write it as 1 minus 2h by r above. Uh, I can do this. Uh, so first of all, let me have it 4 by 3 pi g r. Now what I have rho and rho get cancelled. Uh, 
so take this h by r thing common so r will get cancelled h would be outside and it would be it would be it would be 3 sigma minus 2 rho okay and uh, divided by 1 plus 2 h by r so if i neglect this thing because i am getting what i am i want so this is i'll go for this b option neglecting that this would be the answer so go for option 7 now move ahead to question number 8 two uniform wires same material vibrating under same tension in the first overtone of the first is equal to the second overtone of the second and radius of first is twice the radius of the second then the ratio of the length of the first wire to second wire okay there are many things which are written so material is same only this thing is clear so what we are under the same tension we know v is equal to root t by mu and mu i write as rho by a so because these two things are same so v is inverse to root a or you can say it is inverse to r i can directly say okay now what we are given first overtone of the first wire that would be equals to 2 v1 by 2 l1 that is equal to second overtone that is 3 v2 by 2 l2 so now you have to find the ratio of the length l1 by l2 this 2 and 2 get cancelled that would be 3 by 2 v2 by v1 and from there you can find out it is equal to 3 by 2 r1 by r2 now what is r1 by r2 uh, r1 by r2 is the radius of the first wire is twice so this becomes 3 is 2 1 so the ratio l1 is to l2 the ratio of the length of the first wire to the second wire if i am right i have written right or not okay i have written wrong because it's good that option was not given it should be inverse of that because if i do this so it's better i will okay, cancel it l1 by l2 would be equal to v1 2 v1 by 3 v2 and going by this what i will get uh, that would be 2 by 3 of r2 by r1 and that would be 2 by 3 into 1 by 2 that is going to be 1 by 3 so it is 1 by 3 i calculated wrong it was okay that 3 option was not given otherwise i would have been <laughs> done negative also here so be careful inductor coil capacitor and a resistance 5 ohm connected in series are to an ac source of rms value this when frequency is varied maximum of 5 ampere is ideally maximum current should be obtained at a resonance that should be 30 by 5 that is 6 but here it is 5 it means this coil also have resistance the coil resistance i can directly make out 30 by 5 is 6 so resistance of the coil would be 1 ohm this is the first thing if the inductor is connected in parallel with a resistance 5 ohm to a battery of emf 25 volt internal resistance to ohm the current drawn from the battery is so now you have this rc is equals to 1 ohm so what is the current drawn from the battery it is talking about the steady state so you have that inductor coil this is l and r I don't know L but I know this R is 1 ohm, it is in parallel with what I have, this is 5 ohm and this is a cell of internal resistance 2 ohm. So if I do this in the steady state it will act as a wire so this will become 5 into 1 upon 5 plus 1 that is 5 by 6 ohm and this 5 by 6 plus 2 so the current drawn from the battery would be what I have 25 upon 2 plus 5 by 6. So this is 17 by 6 so 6 by 17 into 25 that is 150 by 17 ampere you can make it out so this is option a now going ahead a connecting loop has total resistance r uniform field b equal to gamma t is applied perpendicular to plane of the loop where gamma is a constant and t is time the induced current flowing through now, first loop. of all due to connection you know this field is increasing so it will have a tendency of anti-clockwise current so this would be anti-clockwise I, I should write it like this but if it flows anti-clockwise here it would be clockwise here so the net uh, flux change or the emf i will write it as uh, net flux into db by dt and net flux would be subtracting of the both to both of the two that is a okay d5 by dt it should be a db by dt sorry i should write it as not d5 by dt so it should be a bigger minus a smaller into db by dt so new gmf would be like this a bigger minus a smaller means b square minus a square db by dt is gamma so what is the current current would be equals to e upon total resistances r so this is b square minus a square gamma by r so not a tough one you have to just check that the emfs will effectively cancel each other out next one two identical parallel plate air capacitors are connected in series to a battery of emf v if one of the capacitor is completely filled with dielectric of constant k then potential difference of the other capacitor will become okay so they were identical and connected to a battery of emf v now one of the capacitor is completely filled with dielectric so now the potential difference would be the first of all let's say the first one is filled with dielectric i assume so v1 by v2 i know it depends on because they are in series they will have the same charge so q is the same cv so that is equal to c2 by c1 so that c2 by c1 would be 1 by k and we know v1 plus v2 is equal to v so if i solve for v1 v1 comes out as 1 upon k plus 1 times v 
V2 comes out as K upon K plus 1 times V. Question is asking for potential difference of other. Other means I have put it in uh, 1. So it would be in 2. So V2 is this much. So this is V2 that I will have the answer that is going to be which option? This is coming out as option A. So go for it. Next one. 12th one. The ratio of minimum wavelength of Lyman and Balmer. I am doing this for too many times. Let me again do it. 1 upon lambda 1 that is a minimum of Lyman that would be equal to R 1 upon 1 square minus 1 upon infinity square you know this is infinity to 1 and this 1 upon lambda 2 that lambda 2 it is 1 upon 2 square minus 1 upon infinity square so if I do the reverse calculation the lambda 1 by lambda 2 would be this 1 by 4 upon 1 that is 1 is to 4 so 0.25 go for option B you can directly make it out next when 90 thorium transforms to this bismuth then the number of alpha so you know alpha changes the mass number is changed by alpha only so the change of mass number is 16 so 16 by 4 we will have 4 alpha 4 alpha means drop of 8 in atomic number but here the drop is 7 that means there will be 1 beta minus and 8 alpha so it is not 8 alpha sorry this is 4 alpha not 8 8 was the change of so 4 alpha and 1 beta I can write it out option D is the answer okay so this is a pretty easy one for you Next one, two particles executing SHM of the same amplitude A omega, the mean position separated by distance x naught, the maximum separation is x naught plus A, then the phase difference between the motion. This is a question that has been asked in so many exams. I remember this, the students get confused in it. So let me solve it, uh, how to do this. So let's assume the first one is means position is x equal to 0, the second one's means position is x equal to x naught. Now, so the coordinate of the x1, let's say assume it is equal to A sine omega t, and for the second, what we'll write? Displacement is x2 minus x0, a same. So don't need to write a1 or a2, just write it a. So that would be a. And let's assume the phase difference between them to be phi. Okay. So at any instant, the difference of the position x2 minus x1, if I'm going to do, if I'm going to do x2 minus x1, it would be x0 plus a sine of omega t plus phi minus sine of omega t. So what I will have? This is x0 plus sin a minus sin b, you know that is equal to 2a cos of a plus b by 2 that is equal to omega t plus phi by 2 into sin of phi by 2. Okay. And you this is given, this is less than or equal to x0 plus a. So in the limiting case, uh, this is time bearing term. So the maximum value of this term would be, this can maximum be 1. So in the limiting case, I can write 2a sin phi by 2 would be equal to 1 comparing it. So in the limiting case, sin phi by 2 is... Uh, uh, equal to a sorry so that sin phi by 2 becomes half so we know sin theta becomes half at uh, 30 and 60 degree uh, sorry 30 degrees so phi by 2 is uh, what I can say it is pi by 3 so not pi by 3 sorry pi by 6 30 degrees so phi is going to be pi by 3 that is what I can write it out as for me the answer no none of the option is correct I'll leave it next one for me the answer should be pi by 3 An electron of mass m has deep Broglie wavelength lambda when accelerated through potential difference v when proton of mass m is accelerated through potential difference in 9b, the de Broglie wavelength associated is. So what we say, lambda is h by p, that is equal to root 2 mk, k, I can write it as qv. So lambda is basically like root mqv now. We had electron and we had proton. So proton electron have same charge, so it would be 1 by root mv. So the required lambda to lambda dash, that ratio would be for the lambda dash, we have the mass as what we write it generally as mass of capital M okay that is given as capital M and that is 9V and that was M into V so what we will get we will get this uh, lambda dash is equal to root of M by capital M and it would be 1 by 3 times lambda that is what we are looking for so as per this the option C is the appropriate one next go the minimum force required to move a body up an incline is 3 times the minimum force required to prevent it from sliding down so to go up if you want to go up you have to apply the force forward and uh, friction opposes this going upward so fx max acts here and the mg component also acts here so the force required to move up that force let's say if I write it as f1 f1 would be equal to in limiting case is equal to mg sin theta plus fs max which is mu s mg cos theta and to prevent prevent means it the angle is greater than angle of repose it mg sin theta is pulling it downwards fs max is trying to save it but it cannot save so you are there to save it so in this case the f2 in the limiting case would be equal to mg sin theta minus fs max that is minus mu s mg cos theta now given this force is three times of this so f1 is thrice of f2 so i can write mg sin of theta plus mu s mg cos theta is equal to three times 
mg sin theta minus mu s mg cos theta so if i do this calculation what i get i uh, take it there 4 mu s mg cos theta is equal to 2 mg sin theta so this mg mg get cancelled and what i am left with i am left with 10 theta is equal to 2 mu s 2 mu s means 1 by root 3 that means theta is 30 degree that's an easy one for you now you must have done such question before now going ahead after 16 we'll take up the question number 17 let's see what is in it a concrete sphere of radius r has a cavity of radius small r which is packed with sawdust the relative densities are this for the sphere to float with its entire volume submerged under water the ratio of the masses okay so simply the bind force must be equal to total weight so bind force would be rho of water into total volume total volume is 4 by 3 pi r cube g and mass if i do for the concave for the sand dust i have 0.3 times relative density that is rho water into 4 by 3 pi r cube g and for that we have 2.4 times rho w into 4 by 3 pi remaining volume is r cube minus r cube into g that you can make it out the remaining volume this one would be r cube minus r cube into 4 by 3 pi so 4 by 3 pi g 4 by 3 pi g and rho w cancel it out so now what we are left with we are left with r cube that is equal to 0.3 r cube plus 2.4 capital r cube minus what i have minus what we have uh, okay minus small r cube times 2.4 so what i'll have now i'll have 2.1 r cube is equals to uh, 1.4 r cube so r cube is equal to 2 by 3 of r cube that is the way we have that means uh, r cube of the so volume is proportional to r cube so it basically has the two third volume there so the ratio of the mass of the concrete to the ratio of the mass of the sawdust if i have to calculate so if I have, I have to calculate that thing so that ratio again i have to take like this so that ratio will become 2.4 times rho w 4 by 3 pi r cube minus r cube that will become r cube by 3 g so that will be in denominator because uh, so, uh, okay concrete con concrete is upward so this would be upwards and sawdust is here 0.3 rho w 4 by 3 pi r cube r cube is 2 by 3 r cube g cancel it 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 3 3 get cancelled what i get 2.4 and here i get is 0.6 that comes out as 4 is to 1 so again you should have you should do it more efficiently i think i have done it a bit long but let's move forward the pressure applied from all direction of a cube is p how much its temperature should be raised to maintain the original volume okay so what we have because of this stress this bulk stress basically the change in volume would be so that we say delta v by v bulk modulus is minus delta p upon delta v by v so what we have the decrement of delta v by v would be approximately p by v here so this is the decrement so we need to increase by this much and that should be equal to that what we write as gamma delta t so gamma here it is written as beta so i can write it as a volume elasticity okay sorry the volume elasticity is b is not not this and this volume is gamma instead of gamma it is written as alpha delta t so what we have what we need temperature change to delta t would be p upon beta alpha that should what i uh, should be writing so i'll go for option a not a tough one if you are thorough with your concepts next one particle of mass m2 m3 m are placed on the same line at distances this is this the distance of cm let's start this is m at l and similarly 2m at 2l and go on so what i'll write xcm is uh, m into l plus 2m into 2l and plus 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 upon m plus 2m plus 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 till nm and there i can write it as plus i can write it as nm into nl okay so now what we are left with take ml as common there you will have 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 that is the sum of the squares till n square and here what we will have this is the sum simple 1 plus 2 plus n so uh, from your mathematical logic sigma n square and sigma n you all are aware so this would be l sigma n square what you write is it n into n plus 1 into 2 n plus 1 divided by 6 and that you write as n n plus 1 by 2 so n n plus 1 get cancelled so what we have 2 l comes up n plus 1 by 6 so it is l by 3 n plus 1 uh, sorry 2 n plus 1 not n plus 1 this is 2 n plus 1 so l by 3 into 2 n plus 1 so option d is the first one that i can make out next step 
in the following common emitter uh, configuration np and transistor with current gain beta is equals to used the output voltage of the amplifier is so, so first of all look at like input voltage is 1 millivolt so output voltage we need to calculate the voltage gain so we know it voltage gain is beta rc by rb so what i have is beta 100 rc is 10 kilo ohm this is one so this is thousand times thousand times in one millivolts thousand that is equal to 1.0 volt go for option c so don't get uh, confused by the diagram it's an easy one next one so we have completed the sot is now the subjective numericals first one a meter bridge circuit is powered by an ideal battery of emf5 negligible internal resistance bridge wire has a resistance per unit length of 0.1 ohm per centimeter unknown resistance x is in the left and 6 ohm in the right the null point divides the wire in the ratio 2 is to 1 what is the current drawn okay so it divides it in the ratio 2 is to 3 first of all because it a meter bridge 0.1 into 100 if i do so i get 10 ohms as the resistance of the wire this is the resistance of the wire it divides it into 2 is to 3 that is 4 is to 6 so that unknown will also be 4 is to 6 so what you have 4 you have 6 here also i can have 4 and here i can have 6 so this is 4 6 4 6 so if i do 10 10 that is 5 the equal net resistance is 5 so the current drawn will be 1 ampere it again is a simply a simply a simple question for you this is 1 ampere now go ahead 22 given that the velocity of light in quads is given and this is half of the c that means you can make out n of quads is 2 and velocity in glycerine is 9 by 4 so will uh, n of glycerine would be what i should write here. 3 into 10 to the power 8 over this so 12 by 9 so i should write it as 4 by 3 okay if a slab made of quads is placed in glycerine as shown in the figure how much is the shift in the position of the object produced by the slab so shift you always remember shift is equal to t into 1 minus 1 upon that n relative thing that you write so shift is t t is what 18 centimeter so 1 minus we have to always write the small uh, shorter upon greater 1 so mu relative if i have the 1 is 2 1 is 4 by 3 so if i do the relative thing this would be 4 by 3 divided by 2 so that will be what i will get i'll get it as 2 by 3 so 18 into 1 minus 2 by 3 that is 1 by 3 that comes out as 6 centimeters so i can directly go for 6 so it is again a single integer for me next and a of the rod of length 1 meter is maintained at 100 and v at 10 what is the temperature at a distance 60 so what we have this is 1 meter uniform rod this a is at 100 degrees b is at 10 degrees 60 from here so that means 40 from here so just remember over 100 the drop is of 90 so what is the drop across 40 the drop across 40 would be 40 by 100 into 90 so what i can write it is 9 4 is a 36 drop so 100 minus 36 that is 64 degrees celsius i can directly go for that so 64 is the answer not degree celsius we'll only write 64 next so second last question we are coming a boy throws at an angle theta with the vertical if the vertical is a component of initial is 20 and imparts and the wind imparts horizontal acceleration also to the left okay the angle at which the ball must be thrown so that the ball returns to the boy's hand so what we need we should throw it like this and it should come at like this so by the times delta y becomes 0 delta x should also become 0 so for delta y equal to 0 what we have 20 t minus half g t square should be equal to 0 so what we have 20 t equal to 5 t square so for here what we have t is equal to what i can write as 4 seconds so in 4 seconds what it is uh, so ux t ux into 4 minus half because minus because it would be opposite to that 8 into t square that is 4 square should be equal to 0 so 4 times ux minus what i have 4 into 4 square that is 16 is 0 so ux, ux is 16 now 10 theta here remember theta is with vertical so it would not be ux by ui by ux this is ux by ui so it comes out as 16 by 20 that is 4 by 5 now you need to value of 10 theta so 10 into 4 by 5 this comes out as 8 so answer is going to be 8 now go ahead just to remember that was from vertical not from horizontal okay next one the last one we have one mole of an ideal monoatomic gas undergoes an adiabatic expansion volume becomes 8 times its initial value the initial temperature is 100 universal gas constant is this then how much is the decrease in the internal energy so because temperature is increasing sorry not volume is increasing first of all it is an adiabatic process so why i have t to the v to the power gamma minus 1 is constant and because it is uh, mono gamma is 5 by 3 so t v to the power 2 by 3 is constant so if i write t initial v initial ki power 2 by 3 is equal to t final v final is what 8 v initial to the power 2 by 3 so t final is t initial into 1 by 8 ki power 2 by 3 that you can easily make out ti by 4 that is 25 kelvin so decrease delta u delta u is ncv delta t it will be negative so it would be decrease n would be 1 cv is 
mono means 3r by 2 and delta t delta t is minus 75 so if i write it 3 by 2 r is what 8 you are given into 75 with minus sign so this is 4 75 4 is 300 300 into 3 that is minus 900 joule i can go for so degrees only so i will write 900 only without negative sign because they are asking for degrees so this was today's paper so please share this channel to the aspirants and do comments what you want what you want to be changed or what uh, modifications you want or you are liking it then also write to me thanks for watching